In this video, we'll be looking at a different test for color vision called the Ishihara test. This test, which we'll walk you through in a moment, has four different types of plates which comprise the test. Those four different types are a vanishing design, and only people with good color vision can see that design, and if you're colorblind then you can't see anything. There are also transformation designs, where people with good color vision can see one thing, but then people who are colorblind will see a different thing. There's also what's called a hidden digit design, where people with good color vision won't be able to see anything, but people who are colorblind can see a digit of some sort. And then lastly, there's a classification design, which is used to differentiate between different types of color blindness. Now let's have a look at how to use the test. This version of the test that we're using is the 24 plate version, though there are other versions out there. Now first of all, the subject is shown plates 1 through to 17, and if any mistakes are made, then the differentiation plates, plates 18 through to 24, are used in order to try to tease out what type of color blindness the subject has. The subject should be shown each plate, and they have 3 seconds in order to provide the correct answer. Plates 18 to 24 consist of a line which the subject will need to trace across the plate. The subject has 10 seconds to complete each trace. Now let's have a look at some of these plates to get an idea as to what these designs look like. Now plate number 1 should be read by both normal vision and people with color vision in exactly the same way. So both should see that there is a number 12 on this plate. Now numbers 2 through to 7 are transformation plates. So in other words, colorblind people will see a different number than what people with normal vision will see. In this example, we're looking at plate number 2, and so people with normal vision should, should see one number. Now I'm going to leave it up to you to decide what number you see. But people with red-green color blindness will see a different number. And again, I'm going to be mean and just leave it to you to decide what number you can see. Now plates numbers 8 through to 13 are what's called a vanishing design. And so people with good color vision can see something, but then people with color deficits can't see anything. Now we've got plate number 8, and so you should be able to see something, and I'm going to leave it to you to read what number you see. But people with a color vision deficit won't be able to see anything. Next, here we are at plates 14 and 15, which are a hidden digit design, and so normal vision people can't see anything, but people with a color deficit will be able to see something. As usual, I'm going to leave it to you to decide what you can see, uh, and this is plate number 14 that we're looking at here. And lastly, once you've gone through those first 17 plates, we arrive at the classification plates, and they're plates 18 to 24. We're looking at plate 18 here. Now as you can see, this plate consists of a red line and a purple line, and so normal vision people will be able to trace both lines. People with protonopia, or a red deficit, will only be able to trace the purple line, since purple contains some blue, and of course they maintain some blue vision. People with deuteranopia, on the other hand, or a green deficit, will only be able to trace the red line, because their red vision is fine. But the blue line, because of the shade of the pigments used, will be less visible to them. Now this last portion of the video is purely optional, so we've now finished experiment 6, so feel free to press stop and go on to the next activity if you want. But I thought we would have a look at some resources for examining color blindness just out of interest. If you go to this URL, this web address here, you get taken to this color blindness simulator, with color being spelt the American way, unfortunately. Regardless, it's a very nifty simulator, and you can add your own photo, and we're going to use one of the plates from the Ishihara test, to the simulator, and then the simulator can be used to show you what that image would look like under different forms of color blindness. Now most resources concentrate on the most common types of color blindness, which is proteanomaly and deuteranomaly, but this one actually has a more extensive range, and so they look at red, green, and blue, but they also look at weak and strong. So they've got proteanomaly, deuteranomaly, and tritonomaly, which is weak, red, green, and blue deficits. But they also look at strong, which is protonopia, deuteranopia, and tritonopia, red, green, and blue. And they also have monochromatic deficits, such as achromatopsia and blue cone monochromacy. Now we're looking at panel 14 from the Ishihara test. And this is what it looks like for normal vision. Now if you've got normal vision, you shouldn't see anything in that panel. 
Now what we can do is just click on one of these options and that will show us what this picture looks like for people with that type of color deficit. Now this panel has been designed to be most obvious for red color blindness, so for proteinopia. So let's click on strong proteinopia. Then after a bit of processing the new image will be displayed. Now as usual I'm going to leave it to you to decide what number you see. I find that with these sorts of hidden number type panels that even once the image is adjusted for that type of color blindness I find that the number's still not very clear. But the aim is to tease out really sensitive sort of changes in color vision. And so uh, they can't make the number too obvious, otherwise then everyone would be able to see it. All right, so that's that color blindness simulator. So have a play around with that. And that website has a lot of other information about color blindness as well. So you may find the rest of that site interesting too. Now another tool you can play around with if you have access to Photoshop is the color proofing tools. If you go up to View, Proof Setup and then look down at the bottom of the list, there's a couple of proofing options for looking at what images would look like with color blindness. Now the reason why those tools are in Photoshop is because when you're designing images you want to be able to see what those images look like under different color conditions. And so if you wanted to check that a logo say was visible to people with color blindness and understandable to people with color blindness then you can switch on these different types of proofing tools and then see what that image would look like to someone with that type of uh, color blindness. Unfortunately it's not quite as complete as that last website that we had a look at. They've only got proteinopia and deuteranopia. So let's have a look at what these tools can do. So we've turned on the proteinopia type of color blindness. So you can see that little check mark at the front of that tool. And then you go up to view proof colors to switch on the proofing tools. And now the image is converted into what it would look like for someone with proteinopia. I personally think that Photoshop does a better job at processing the colors compared to that previous website. The Adobe Color Gamut is a major color reference system, much like the Pantone color system. And so the Adobe processing of colors is generally going to be much more accurate than a third party color processing software. Now just out of interest, let's have a look at one more plate. This is plate number three from the Ishihara test. This is what it looks like to people with normal vision. Now let's convert it to what it would look like to someone with proteinopia. And you should notice that the number now appears as a different number. It's very, very faint, but I'm going to leave it up to you to decide what number you think that looks like. And lastly, this is plate number 18. So this shows one of those discrimination tests. And people with normal vision should see two lines, a red line and a purple line. And let's convert this to what it looks like with proteinopia. Now from this you should be able to see that the red line has disappeared completely leaving just a really really faint blue line which hopefully someone with proteinopia can still follow but it is really really faint and really difficult to see. And so hopefully what you're getting from this is just how difficult it is to differentiate between different shades of color when you have one of these color vision deficits.